So welcome back. Arlo and I are here and we're still baking. Um, how far are we into our time at home? I don't know. Today? Well, probably weeks. coming up on two weeks. Yeah, coming up on two weeks. Um, we've been to the grocery store once uh, and the thing we really needed was fresh. We're kind of out of fresh. Um, I feel like we have a lot of our staples, dried beans, stuff like that. We're definitely not starving. Um, and Right? We're not starving. No, no, no. And uh, we're doing a lot of baking. So the thing that we are going to make today is the simple tortilla recipe off the website. And there are a few good things about this recipe. Um, one is that it doesn't have yeast and we've seen comments where people are saying they don't have access to yeast and so this is a bread that can be made very quickly um, without yeast. And the other thing that's really good about this recipe is that you can substitute in some other types of flour. So the recipe calls for all-purpose all and I know that um, all-purpose is hard to find right now. King Arthur um, Miller's distributors, everyone in the whole supply chain is working around the clock to get more flour to stores and we appreciate everyone's patience as it comes through. There's no shortage, it's just an issue of supply. So we're getting it there, I promise. Um, so what I'm doing today is I am going to use a little bit of all purpose but then I have a bunch of other odds and ends in my pantry and so we're going to use some of those and I'll talk about that when we get to the mix. So. Uh, maybe a quick word about the tortillas. We eat these quite a bit, right? Yeah. We eat these quite a bit um, because they go with so many different things from soup. Uh, with soup, I like them just folded up and served on the side. Um, they're really good with hummus. They're great with dips of all kinds. Yeah. Um, we like them with curry. I like them with a bowl of beans. Lentils, Lentils are really good also. Yes, many, many uses um, for these breads. and. The reason that they're so versatile and the reason that they handle different kinds of flour so well is that this is one of the oldest types of bread in the world. So before, um, before we had agriculture, people were making flat breads like this um, baked on a bed of coals. Um, the oldest breads in the world look like this. That's why I think why they're so successful today is their versatility. So we're gonna make a version of that. Okay. So come on in here, Anthony. So in the bowl, I have my flowers. Now, like I said, the recipe calls for all, all purpose. Um, and let's just take a tour of the bowl and I'll walk around and show you what I have here today. I have some all purpose, about half the amount called for I have as all purpose. And then I have some um, whole wheat, some of the brown and red bag whole wheat. And then I also have some cornmeal. I have some buckwheat flour. And then I have my salt and leavener. Um, I guess this is just a good demonstration of how versatile this is. Um, this morning I made a test batch and I even put some toasted almond flour in it as well. And then once those were um, done, instead of, where did I put those? Oh, they're over here. Um, once, those, once those were mixed, I rolled them out on a bed of sesame seeds and I just made crackers. So it's a very versatile dough. Um, I rolled these out very thinly, like I said, on a bed of sesame, uh, of sesame seeds. And then on the baking tray, I just cut them with a pizza wheel. Not all the way through, just to sort of mark them. And then I baked them for about 20 minutes at 400 until they're nice and crisp. So, very versatile dough. That's all to say, very, very versatile dough. Um, and on the website, there are some other examples of these simple tortillas, flatbreads that can be made on the stovetop. Um, there's a corn tortilla there as well, which is delicious. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this mix going. Um, so, flour's in the bowl. Before you add any liquid um, to your dry ingredients, you always want to make sure that they're homogenous or sort of evenly distributed. Okay, that looks pretty good. Oil and water. And the water is warm. Uh, all this is in the recipe, um, but the, the reason that the water is warm is that it will actually um, 
it will actually help to hydrate some of the starch and it gives them a little bit more supple. The dough will be a little bit more supple. So I'm off-roading a little bit, right? I'm not exactly following the recipe and that's okay, but there are a couple things that you wanna be careful of anytime you're not following a recipe. Um, and what you want to be aware of, especially with dough, is the texture. And so if I change the grains, different grains have different levels of absorption. The amount of water that they, that they can hold changes. So if I had just followed the recipe and only used all-purpose flour, I think this would be a little bit firmer. When I tested it, it's a little bit firmer than this. This is a little soft. So. Knowing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of flour. It feels just a little bit soft to me. I'm going to add a tiny bit of flour. I want this to feel somewhere around the hydration or softness of Play-Doh. It needs to be somewhere in that range if anybody can remember what Play-Doh feels like. Do you remember what Play-Doh feels like? Not really, honestly. No? I remember making it. But... You remember making it? Yeah. I think we used to. Mom used to make that some. I don't remember the texture as much as I remember the smell of the stuff that comes in the little uh, That's plastic uh, container. So I'm just getting that small additional amount of flour in there. And it still feels just a little bit soft. So I'm gonna add a titch more flour. Just a titch. The buckwheat is in here is um, absorbing at a little bit different rate, and also the cornmeal. The cornmeal is kind of a coarse grind, and so it can take a little bit of time for it to absorb. If I let it rest a little bit, it'll be fine. Okay. Put a little bit of flour on the counter. like I'm going to need this for just a second or fold it really it doesn't need much okay so if you want to make tortillas which are about eight or nine inches across um, you can divide this into eight pieces if you want to make um, a taco shell like closer to what we would say is more of a taco, then we divide into um, slightly smaller pieces. So maybe eight for a larger eight or nine inch. And if you're going to do tacos or something like that, maybe a little bit, um, maybe a little bit bigger piece. Or sorry, smaller piece, a little smaller piece. Okay. Can you get these into balls for me, Arlo? Sure. Should I just like fold them? Yeah, just do them into. Just kind of appreciate them. Like this? Yeah, that looks good. You know, you can do it in your hand too, like this. Like a little round. It's a little soft. Yeah. If your dough's a little firm, it's fine. As long as you don't have any dry bits, you're going to be just fine. Uh, if it's a little soft, it'll make uh, it so that you have to use a little bit more flour on your surface when you're rolling it, but it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Okay. need just a minute to relax so I'm gonna start pat them a little bit and then I'm gonna put a towel over them and maybe we'll talk for just a second about our um, our toppings uh, for our for our tacos okay so um, 
one of the things that we have in the pantry that's holding really well, obviously, uh, are potatoes. And so these are sweet potatoes. I just sliced them, you know, they're pretty variable. Maybe they're about a quarter inch, maybe a little bit more. A quarter inch or so thick. And then I put whatever dried spices you want. Um, salt, pepper, what else? Paprika. Paprika, cumin, cumin. anything else? I put, I put curry powder. I put a little curry on, any of that. And then uh, olive oil, and then I just roast them until they're softened. Um, and that works really well. Um, so I did some of those, and they're still pliable. They're still soft, um, but they have a really nice meaty texture. And then I did the same thing with some red onions too. Some red onions, okay. Okay, so like I said, in a perfect world, um, we would let these rest for about half an hour uh, or so. Um, what you want to do is just check and see how they feel. If they're snapping back, then you have to wait. Um, when you use all-purpose all flour, they may need that full half hour. When you have stuff like cornmeal and buckwheat, which has no gluten in it, um, the dough is more extensible. It stretches out more easily. So that's an option. You want to turn that heat up to medium for me? Okay. Which one? Uh, the tortilla pan is fine. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm rolling from the center to the outside, center to the outside. And if it looks like it's sticking for just a second, just turn it over and make sure you have a little bit of flour. You want to be on the cooking part, or do you want to be on the rolling part? What team do you want to be on, dude? I want to be rolling. You want to be rolling? Sure. I might get you a head start with the rolling in while you cook, because you you know you do that really well. Okay. So from the center to the outside, and these are pretty dark. I mean, they have a lot, a lot, a lot of whole grain in them. It's probably 50% or more whole grain. So you can see that that's really thin, really, really thin. And that can just hang out for a second. Uh, I'll roll another one while the pan heats up. Um, and like I said, because these are these feel just a tiny bit soft to me, um, I'm just being pretty generous with the flour to make sure that I don't uh, that I don't stick. Pan What's that? Pan is a 419. 419. Okay. So the pan's nice and warm. Just set it straight on. The pan. This uh, griddle is not oiled or anything. We're just going straight on there on that dry pan, and that will be. Um, it won't stick. I really like cast iron for that. Um, if you don't have cast iron, you can try. Um, stainless will work too, should work just fine. Wait until you see some bubbles. So it's kind of like, maybe it's like cooking a pancake in some ways in that you wait until you see some bubbles appearing and then we'll check it. Doesn't look like it's quite there yet. So. That was starting to stick just a little bit, so I went over here and I grabbed a little bit of flour and then I came back. Pretty round, doesn't have to be perfect. That's pretty good. Set that one aside. How are we doing, Arnold? Yeah, it's not, nothing's really happening. First tortilla is like kind of like the first pancake. We're just waiting for that to heat up just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to keep rolling for a second. And you're not looking for these to puff like uh, pita. You might see some holes but um, and some air bubbles, but you won't see them really puff. What do you think about being out of school, Arlo? How's it going? Um, it's 
it's cool that we're still continuing doing school. Yeah. Do you feel like it's busier or not as busy? Um, busier. Busier. Anthem, how about you? Do you feel like it's busier or not as busy? Much busier. Much busier, right? A lot going on. Yeah, you think it's ready? Yeah, let me see. So, yeah, yeah, good. It's quite stiff. Yeah, stiff. This next one is going to be a little better. Okay. Uh, where should I put them? I'll grab it. Let's get another one on there. This guy. I like the flavor of the whole grains in this, and um, you know they're they're good with with all purpose also. Um, and by the time you get all of these delicious toppings on them, um, they work really well. Um, but something about the addition of the um, buckwheat or the whole wheat, whatever it is that you have in your pantry, I think is really nice. Yep, that looks good. Yeah. So you see how you're getting that bubbling and a little bit of color. We want a little bit more color than that, but um, I feel like our pan is still coming up in temperature a little bit. Okay. It's done? Yep, yep. Let's see here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's make one more and then maybe we'll stop and we'll get some, uh, and we'll make ourselves uh, some food here. I'm going to stop a moment for a second. Okay. Okay. We've got another one here, buddy, when you're done, okay? When you're okay, done with that. Okay, let's see here for a second. So do you see the bubbles that are coming? Mm -hmm. That's good. But we don't have any charring yet, so I like I like it when it has a little bit of color on the underside, right? A little yeah. bit of those dark spots. Right. So sometimes they puff up kind of like roti a little bit. Okay, turn that down for a second. All right. Yeah, I'll take care of that one. There we go. Okay, you grab a plate. You already have some oil in there? Uh, yeah, I already have some oil in there. You're good. Okay, what do I need here? So, um, the other day in the pita video, I showed how to make some pickled onions. And these are basically following the exact same recipe as that, except I had a bunch of, I had a bag of radishes, and so I used the bag of radishes instead of the onions. Uh, and it's a really nice, um, that's a really nice one. Put your egg in there? Yep. Um, we're going through some eggs. Um, Anthem's chickens are laying really well uh, with the extended daylight, and so, um, we have eggs, and so we're eating a fair amount of eggs. At least yeah, I am. Two eggs in a row today. Yeah, well, I started the day with two. We've got some fish that we um, seared off yesterday. Some le basically just some leftovers. Um, let's put some onion on, and we've got some potatoes from dinner. Crazy color, right? Sweet potato. Mm. 
Cilantro. Okay. There's mine. I'm gonna leave that for a second. And Arlo, I'm gonna get your plate ready. Is your egg pretty close? Yeah. Turn it? Not yet. Okay. All right. Let me get you a plate going here, Arlo. Okay. Let's see what we got. I like this amount of color is kind of what we're going for. Our pan wasn't quite hot enough, but if you see this kind of color, that's perfect. And in terms of storage, um, these these tortillas will do really well if you um, if you keep them covered not just with a towel but you need like something like a little bit of plastic um, like a plastic bag or something like that will hold a little bit of that um, moisture in. If they dry out um, they won't be quite as good. Okay. Arlo, what do you want? Do you want a little bit of this sauce that I made? Yes please. So this is just um, mayonnaise with a little bit of hot sauce and a little bit of the pickling liquid and salt, pepper, um, and cilantro in there too. So you said yes to avocado, is that right? Yeah. I okay. So Arlo's gonna have some avocado and a little bit of cilantro. Yep. And a little bit of onion. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit of onion. Some fish, maybe? You want some fish and some egg? Okay. Yeah, Arlo's fried egg. Over easy, good job. Uh, a little bit of radish, Arlo? Yep. And a little bit of hot sauce? Yep. Just a little bit. Just a little bit, the stuff's pretty spicy. did I miss? I think fish. that's pretty good. Do you want some fish too? Yes. All right. Okay. Egg and fish. All right. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Is that it? Does that look good? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Did you get a bite? I have to like, do you want me to cut yours? No. no, you're good? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Mmm. It's really good. Mmm. -hmm. Mm -mm. Fish is good. The curry powder that I put on the sweet potato really came through on mine. And it's a little bit spicy too. Anything else to say about this? Other than it's really good? It's yeah. really good. No, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're going to have more of these videos. Um, Amy Driscoll is also doing several, um, sort of episodes or videos from her kitchen as well. And that's, um, Bake for Good Kids. You'll see, um, lots of great content there. You'll see Facebook live events, um, and lots of engagement across the board. Um, we're working hard to help sort of foster this community of people who are turning to baking as a source of inspiration and comfort and we're glad that you join us and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.